welcome to the Fat Emperor podcast. I'm your host, Ivor Cummins. Hey guys, today we're going to cover an old topic, heart disease. Uh, we'll be away from the viral stuff and I'm going to be talking to a pal in New Zealand, uh, Warren. And he had an extraordinary experience, all too common, unfortunately, with severe heart disease, valve disease, etc. And I know he's on the way to a meeting pretty quickly, but Warren, great to see you again. And hopefully we can have a quick chat about your experience. Yeah, love to, Ivan. Great stuff. And maybe first you give a very brief kind of intro of yourself and your background before we get into the heart stuff. Okay. I'm 73 years of age. And uh, for the last 20 years, uh, my whole life has been centered around you know, health you know, with supplements, mainly because I set up a manufacturing operation to do that. Uh, one of my interests was, in fact, uh, and still is, uh, that of the ocean. And uh, you know, about seven, eight years ago, I built a boat and uh, New Zealand sailed it off to, um, to Asia. And uh, I have enjoyed really good uh, health because uh, that's been my main focus. I do uh, extensive blood tests um, you know, twice a year and everything was, was great. And uh, in fact, here's a, a photo of myself on the boat when I was 70. And, uh, but look what happened a year later. Here I am in the ICU, flat on my back, you know, uh, because I've just had uh, open heart surgery for replacement uh, aortic valve. And I had no idea I had a problem. All that happened was in 2018, started getting a, a little bit of puffiness when I was um, uh, walking around exercising, but I had a period where I hadn't been doing a lot of exercise. I thought, oh, well, I've just uh, haven't been doing enough. I need to do a bit more. But when I did, it actually got worse. Just, just a bit of puffiness, no pain or anything like that at all. And uh, then when I had it checked out, because I finally relented and went to a doctor, and uh, they found that um, after doing some tests with the cardiologist that I had a calcified aortic valve. And the opening, instead of being four and a half to five square centimeters, was only 0 0.9. So the cardiologist says, hey, you're going to have to have um, you know, uh, surgery and have replaced your aortic valve. And I said, oh, you know, I said, don't, no worries. I said, I'll fix it myself. And he says, you better do it quick. He said, because I reckon that uh, you'll be dead inside a year if you don't. So I said, okay, give me three weeks and I'll do some research on it. Did some research on it, believed that it was possible to naturally you know, fix it, but I'd left it too long. It would take two to three years to uh, probably you know, correct it. So I had to relent and have uh, you know, open heart surgery. Uh, which um, you know, wasn't the sort of thing I'd recommend to, uh, to anybody. My uh, son-in-law had had the same operation and he, uh, um, he, at age 42 and he died uh, a few hours after surgery and my sister had had the same and she died also. But I survived. There was a couple of complications, but nonetheless, I survived. And uh, so that started me on the quest of how could it have been avoided in the first place because... You know, obviously, um, if I've got calcification in the aortic valve, there's calcification in other parts of my cardiovascular system, and it would only be a matter of time before you know, it became a problem again. And of course, one of the things that I'm particularly concerned about was I'd hate to have you know, some calcification in some of the capillaries and end up with a stroke and be a, be a vegetable because, you know, uh, I'm only... 70 odd and uh, you know, I figured I should have another 20 years. So um, that's when I dedicated my time. I structured things in the business so I could spend the time just researching uh, what could be done to in fact um, uh, avoid this happening again in the future. An extraordinary story in ways, but at the same time, sadly, it's so common. Uh, and I remember we were talking back in 2020 about that guy in the American Heart Association in his 50s on preventative drugs and reasonable shape and obviously the head of the Heart Association. And he pretty much effectively drops dead of a heart attack just after giving his speech at their yearly convention. And luckily they, they brought him back. So it just goes to show you, this is the silent killer. I mean, this calcification building uh, with no signs. And that, that's the really sad thing. 
It is, and of course, um, uh, that's how I end up uh, getting to know you, of course, because as part of my research on the uh, calcification issues for cardiovascular is how I came across uh, you, which of course resulted in me popping over to see you in Ireland and then you in turn coming over here to uh, New Zealand, uh, which was all helpful from the point of view of doing this formulation. But here's what's interesting is that the uh, formulation which uh, put together um, I had that completed by around the middle of 2019 so the operation was uh, which I had was in October 2018 and by uh, it took about six to eight months of full-time work to uh, you know, work out this other um, you know, protocol you know, to try and help decalcify or improve the you know, the arteries and the you know, the general cardiovascular health. And um, so I had that done by around about the middle of 2019 and then started testing it on myself. So what I did is I took a double dose, you know, for the first few months. And then at that time, I also discovered a, um, a process called the PWA, which is a pulse wave analysis test approved by the FDA and it's non-invasive and what's really interesting is that it um, can measure the elasticity of the arteries which is a big thing from a point of view of prevention of uh, heart attack or strokes because uh, you know, if you've got elasticity in your, in your arteries uh, should you get a blockage it's much more likely that it can blockage can get past and uh, it doesn't you know, stop the blood flow so anyway <clears throat> I had my first test with the PWA uh, in January 2020 and uh, at that stage I was 72 and uh, the end result comes out with an age and I can put up on the screen the uh, uh, the graphs which you know show how it all works and what the uh, biological age you know, is you know, when somebody has that test. Mine came out at 56 which I was pretty delighted about, given that um, I was 72 at the time. And I also had my son with me at the same time. He was 42. That was Kirk. And Kirk, you know, is not as fanatical about his health as what I am. And uh, his test came out at over 70. And I thought, oh, they've, they've stuffed up the results. They've gone back to front. So, because he's Kirk Warren and I'm Warren James. And um, I reckon they got it mixed up. But when I questioned them on it, they said there's no way because uh, it gets entered into the computer system and it, it cannot be switched over. So anyway, I, I was delighted if that was the, the case, delighted for me, not so happy for you know, Kirk. So I got him onto the same, uh, you know, uh, same formula which I was using and uh, had him do a, a test a, a few months later and he had actually dropped down about 10 years so that was you know, positive but for myself i kept on with the regime which i you know, which i had and i didn't make a lot of changes in terms of lifestyle but i did make some uh, mainly as a result of talking to you i uh, was really a lot more careful about you know, carbs and cut back on carbs and in particular yeah, bread, and also reduce the amount of intake, and I try to skip lunch wherever I can. Well, anyway, in December last year, 2020, I thought, right, let's do another test. So, same machine, same process, and uh, we'll put it up on the screen in a moment. And this time, you know, there had been a further substantial improvement in the elasticity of my arteries. And I was now, you know, came out at an age of 40, you know, from 73. So, you know, needless to say, I was pretty happy about that. And of course, you know, I, I feel great. You know, everything's working, working good. So I now have no worries or concerns about, uh, you know, any cardiovascular issues with the protocol that I'm, uh, you know, now on. Yeah, very good, Warren. And again, N equals one, you know, it's a cliche now, got to be careful, N equals one. But that's quite compelling data because the PWA, I'm very familiar with it, and it's a very good test. And I just say arterial elasticity, which is a great indicator of general arterial health. And obviously, when it's got a very good number, 
it's very unlikely to be developing atherosclerotic plaque, etc. So just to parse it out, though, back in 18, you had the problem. Obviously, you had extensive calcification. You got the valve replaced. Uh, and then the first test with the PWA is January 20. Uh, you come in around, as you say, in the 50s when you're really 72 of arterial age. Kurt comes in and he is 42, but he comes in in the 70s. And I remember you told me, yeah, I remember you told me at the time, and I actually was convinced, like you suspected, I was convinced they had reversed the results. Um, but it was interesting when I saw then the reports you sent on and the dates, I realized very unlikely they're going to mess that up with two separate sittings. Uh, but then the next one is late 20, and then you come in with an age of 40. So it's going in the same direction, extraordinarily down. Uh, which is good, obviously, and Kurt comes in in the 60s, uh, and he's been addressing challenges in that period too, and he's likewise gone in the right direction. Um, so you're both, at this stage, you're both taking the formulation of all these components that we had discussed, and I checked out the suppliers and the science. You're pretty much both by December now on this for, for a period. Yes, uh, although I must say about uh, with Kirk is not so... Um... Uh, dramatic um, in the respect that he hasn't uh, made some of the other changes he should have made, particularly with related to his diet. In that regard, I've been a bit more diligent than he has, and probably consequently why I've had you know, better results. The, the formulation, of course, definitely uh, you know, has been a, a big factor in it, but it's not the only you know, factor. I, I, I don't believe this. I've been in this business for the last 20 years, and there's no such thing as a a magic pill that um, you know solves all problems. It's got to be a, a combination of multiple things. One thing I do know, which was interesting, was that after I had the uh, you know, the surgery, the the doctor, the cardiologist, and the surgeon all insisted that I go on a statin drug and uh, a um, uh, an aspirin. And I said, no way in the world. I said because you guys haven't done your research. I said, if you'd done your research properly, you wouldn't use a statin. And so I'm on no medication at all, none at all. And uh, the, uh, I think that you know, pharmaceuticals have a, a place in time for temporary use to, uh, to deal with a specific issue or symptom, but not long term and certainly not a statin. And I think that in the case of cardiovascular, you do not need to have um, a. Um, uh, you don't need to have a, a, a statin, and in fact, I think it's detrimental. We've got a lot of a lot of uh, clients that have, in fact, uh, were on statins and had all sorts of issues uh, with it. So, in any case, I'm on no I'm on no medication at all, and uh, my cardiovascular health is now excellent, and I have no concerns about any future heart attack or stroke. Yeah, but that's a great way to be. But it, certainly I'll pick you up on that point, synergy. So between the diet, the lifestyle, the kind of skipping meals, and then all of these components. And again, I suppose the formulation, as you say, it's not just taking, you know, K2. It's not just taking magnesium. It's not just taking uh, taco trienols. It, it's a mixture of all of them. And they all have pretty good science. So if you mix all of those things together in one, you know, intervention, and then you add getting rid of the bread and the carbohydrates, which no doubt was a, a major problem in itself in your life. Um, and then, of course, the two meals a day is a great one for someone who's, who's beyond middle age. Uh, it's an amazing synergy. So those results, which are quite extraordinary, um, and they need to be replicated, of course, in large numbers of people, etc. That's the usual thing. Uh, but it's an amazing result. And, you know, I'd like to go through now some of that detail because that's what people always want to know. You know, what are the the interventions? What are the components? What's the science behind them? But I'm just conscious that you were kind of rushing to a meeting, you told me, so we might have to pick this up tomorrow maybe, if possible. Yeah, I was. Now, look, because, yeah, as you say, there's a, a number of moving parts with this. So uh, uh, if you like, I'd be happy to, you know, come back... Um, you know, shortly and, uh, you know, do another one talking about, you know, why I got those results and how. 
Excellent, Warren. And, you know, I might leave people with just a short clip of the AHA president. And keep in mind, that guy was on the drugs, preventative, and he's the expert. And he clearly had no appreciation, I would guess, of insulin resistance and the other real factors that drive most heart disease. So great stuff, Warren. We'll pick it up again tomorrow. Thank you. OK, talk to you later. Less than 24 hours after giving this speech, Dr. Warner would suffer a heart attack. But I never would have thought that I had a heart, would have had a heart attack at age 52. Warner seemingly the picture of health, a track athlete in college. He exercises regularly, watches his diet, and does not have the traditional risk factors associated with heart disease, like smoking, high cholesterol, or high blood pressure. I felt fine that morning, and many heart attack victims that have a sudden cardiac arrest get no warning symptoms. According to the American Heart Association, about 350,000 Americans suffer a cardiac arrest outside a hospital every year. Only about 10% survive. Immediate CPR can double or triple survival rates. We knew that we needed help immediately. Warner's heart attack happened in his hotel room, witnessed by his wife, Lisa, and their two children. He wasn't breathing at this point. He was turning purple. Lisa and her son Jacob went to get help. Daughter Lauren stayed. I used my knowledge of CPR and I began to do some chest compressions on him. Thankfully, professional help wasn't too far behind. Warner's hotel was filled with heart doctors attending the conference. Dr. Tia Raymond and nurse Janie Garza responded to the call for help. The two performed CPR and used the hotel's portable defibrillator to restart Warner's heart. All contributed to saving his life, but he says one thing was critical. CPR was absolutely what saved my life, and if I had not received CPR, I wouldn't be here today. And just a reminder that I do need support to continue putting together all of this content and at patreon.com forward slash Ivor Cummins or for PayPal, please see the description below this video or the pinned comment and you can do a one-off or a monthly support. So I'd really appreciate that guys and keep me getting the science out there and countering perhaps the more biased corporate type science. Thank you.